Okay. So how are the summer workouts going? Okay. Summer workouts are going good. We're in the middle of our fourth week. Um, get a week off next week for Fourth of July. I think everything's been going pretty smooth. Um, we're glad to be back in the flow of things. Uh, what did what did you take from last year that you want to improve on this year? Oh, just a lot of things Rick did, um, the way he prepared, and um, see him seeing him grow those three years. Um, it's all little stuff, but over the years um, he changed some things and. I hope to add those into my game this year. What do you think it takes to be a successful quarterback in the Big Ten? Well, if there's one thing I learned from Rick, it's you got to be cool-headed. There's going to be some ups and downs. Uh, it's not always perfect. Um, preparation's huge. And then um, uh, just really that cool-headed part. I mean, uh, watching Rick battle through the ups and downs, the interceptions, the touchdowns, the wins, the losses um, for three years really just helped me see you got to have that attitude. It's just it's the next pitch. Are you ready to be that guy that when you throw a pick, the crowd's going to be, hey, we want the backup, and then when you do well, they're cheering for you? Yeah, I think so. If I'm not ready now after three years, then I'll never be ready. You mentioned, like, the cool-headedness of Rick. Was there, like, a concrete example that kind of sticks with you to this day as far as something that you did? Indiana uh, is the first thing that pops to my head. That game was terrible for a long time, and then it's like all of a sudden we completed one pass, and then we were on a roll after that. So um, that's just one that comes to my head. Do you feel like you're having cool and calm? Does that come easy for you? Or? Um, uh, yeah, I think I'm a pretty laid back guy. I don't really get jacked up. Um, I try to stay as calm and cool. Um, at quarterback, you're more of a thinker than you are off emotion, so I try to stay there. Do you feel like you have a command of this team, that this is your team, or do you think you have to wait until you actually get on the field to have that? Well, I think I've started building that this spring. Um, that will only continue to grow as we move into camp and uh, into the season. But, yeah, I think I, I, there's a leadership role that needs to be filled, and I'm trying to step into it. Um, there's a lot of experienced guys out there with me, so I just hope to gain their trust. What's the biggest challenge for you right now? Biggest challenge right now, I just need to keep – preparing for the season, getting bigger and stronger and watching film. Um, you, can't, you, just, you can't let yourself get complacent in the summer. It's really easy to kind of take it off. Um, even when we are working out as much as we are, um, there's a lot of free time and just trying to keep myself busy with stuff that I know that's going to make me better. Is there a different feel for you this summer that you're the man? You know, the past couple of years you've been behind Rick, mm -hmm. kind of taking the number two snaps, but a different feel this summer? Yeah, there's definitely a different feel. I mean, I feel like I need to be a leader throughout all the drills. Um, it's not as many older guys. I mean, not only Rick, but we lost 26 seniors or something like that. So we lost a lot of good players, and um, I'm ready to step up, and I'm sure a lot of other people are as well. How would you describe the rapport that you've been able to establish like over the years with guys like Marvin and Keenan that you know allows you to you know have a good connection with them now when you're on yeah. the stage? Even though I was never the number one guy, I, I think I was every bit as good of friends with all those guys as Rick was, maybe even more. Um, I'm real good friends with the whole receiving crew. They're all great guys, and uh, we've been doing a lot of extra just trying to I mean, it's not that we don't have each other's time. Mm -hmm. We've thrown with each other for three years, but just trying to tune everything up and stay in tune. So come this fall, we can just hit the ground running. Do you have high expectations of yourself? Well, yeah, I, yeah, I know what level I can play up to, and I, I just want to play my best, what I know is my best. And um, I think at quarterback in the Big Ten, you're gonna want to have high expectations. And I mean, certainly, you don't want to throw interceptions, touchdowns. What's your recollection of the Ohio State game? I mean, the preparation that week, mm -hmm. did they just, like, dunk your head in water and try to, you know, get you zoomed in, or did they kind of lay off the uh, They The coaches laid off me is, is more on me, and I, I mean, I knew what I was getting myself into. Um, I knew it was going to take a lot of preparation. They're a great team, obviously. It's going to be a huge stage. So I, I think I knew it, and then I just asked for help. I asked Rick for help, Marvin, Coach O'Keefe. Um, they were, everybody else was so cool about it. Um, so that was really nice. But, I mean, it was a great experience, and I know I learned a lot from that game and those three games in general that are going to help me out this fall. How did you keep your mind clear, not put too much pressure on yourself during the week, and then, of course, when you walk out and you look and see 5,000 people? No, yeah, it's, I mean, it's a completely different role being number one. I remember <laughs> thinking the first thing I thought, like, after the Northwestern game was, man, I'm going to have to lead all those walkthroughs during the week now. Just is a random weird thought, but it's just a whole different role being the number one guy. A lot of stuff you don't have to do at number two. So, um, I mean, having that experience and being here for three years, I think I'm ready to go.